March 23rd is celebrated annually as World Meteorological Day. The objective of this day is to commemorate the establishment of the World Meteorological Organization, a specialized United Nations agency, on March 23, 1950. Observance of this day highlights the significance of national meteorological and hydrological services around the world. This year's theme is Early Warning and Early Action, and it reflects the importance of prevention, preparedness, and response in times of weather, climate, and water-related hazards. The National Meteorological Service of Belize is the government's authority on weather and climate. They provide weather forecasts, gather climate data, and issue warnings and alerts for the purpose of protecting life and property and contributing to the social and economic development of Belize. Ronald Gordon is the Chief Meteorologist of the service. One of the things uh, to minimize uh, damage to property and of course safeguarding life is to have an early warning system of any hazardous weather and cli or climate activity that could affect, negatively affect um, citizens of the country. No? The information that we provide becomes even more important now because we have more natural disasters affecting communities, affecting livelihoods and also costing people and the government you know, millions of dollars in damages when these um, systems affect us, when these um, adverse weather events affect us. So because of that, the early information that we could provide to the disaster risk community is extreme, it becomes even more important now. An early warning system simply means that there is a mechanism in place of knowing the forecast beforehand and having a system of alerting persons on what the forecast is and the possible impacts on persons. We at the National Met Service um, issue forecasts on things like flooding or the possibility of severe thunderstorms. Uh, how do we do that? We look at different climate, different forecast models and we also, um, in the, that's in the longer term and in the shorter term, we have systems such as satellite imagery, radars, and automatic weather stations across the country that are cons consistently or constantly monitoring the weather situation. And um, therefore, we can know um, where uh, any severe activity is occurring, and we can issue that alert to the public. If you know beforehand what the weather is going to be like, then you can use that um, for planning and um, carrying out to different activities, whether it's on the short term going about your day-to-day -day, um, as a normal person or a construction worker or a um, marine person or in the longer term for those like farmers and um, energy generators and other users, the information that we provide here um, on the short term and also long term is very important for planning purposes. So how is the weather and climate information gathered? Just as a recipe needs different ingredients, the weather and climate reports need different inputs before they're complete. The department is made up of three sections that use a wide array of software and electrical equipment, some of which have been upgraded over the years for efficiency. We have the weather forecasting and analysis section, which is the one that does the daily weather forecast that we hear on the radio and, and so forth, or you see on our website. We also have the agroclimatic section that does look at drought, look at seasonal forecasts and that type of thing. The previous reader used to be analog, right? And now the data from this reader is in a digital format, so you could send it to any computer and process it using radar software. This reader has an even larger range. I mean, it covers the entire country, I believe, right, from north to south. And, when, and the longest range is 400 kilometers. It covers part of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and then the portion of the Caribbean Sea. So. Before 2010, we operated only manual stations. We had 20 manual or conventional weather stations. From 2010 till now, we have been slowly building out a network of automatic weather stations that give us data in real time. This section basically operates on a 24-hour basis. Um, normally, each shift would comprise of a weather forecaster, of which I am at the moment, and a weather observer. And they're always here constantly monitoring the weather um, day and night. On a day-to-day -day basis, we prepare the weather forecast. There are several different types of weather forecasts that um, we prepare for different sectors. For the aviation industry, we, pre we prepare um, an aviation forecast once per day. 
in addition to the um, hourly or more frequent weather observations that we send to them. But also we prepare the general forecast. This is a just overall um, general view of what the weather conditions um, are going to be like for the next 24, 48 hours. And um, we even go out to four days in advance. We also prepare marine forecasts for um, fishermen and those who use um, the sea. We collect and record the data that have from the weather. We basically enter those into the computer as coded messages and we transmit those over to the control tower at the airport and as well as internationally. With all the data coming in, there was a need to get the information back out to the public. So this is where my role comes in, as I manage the website and I help get the information coming in from the different applications through the website. The media houses would normally call in and they would give the forecast live. So now as an easier method to reach the public in a quicker sense, they now do the recording and the media houses can just go to the website, download it and have it available. Here we have our weather station observation network. So this is actually all our weather stations located across the country. So once the weather station receives a reading, it's stored in our database and then we visualize it here on our website. Information provided through an early warning system is significant to different partners of the National Met Service as it influences the planning and livelihoods of the public. The agriculture, marine, and aviation sectors are three major partners of the department, with the latter being the most important, which is why the Met Service is strategically located at the Philip Goldson International Airport. They use that information to help them um, guide um, the pilots um, in their landing and taking off here at the airport. Whenever there's a bad day, that information is very critical for them. Instead of every hour um, doing the observation, just depends on the severity of the weather. It, we might need to send them special updates, which we call SPECI, every 15 minutes or even um, more frequent, depending on how severe the weather is. The National Met Service falls within the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management. The department provides information for all areas of that ministry, including the National Emergency Management Organization and other relevant government departments. We're always there with National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, um, during the hurricane season especially, um, issuing advice to NEMO on any system that could potentially affect beliefs in the tropical storm, hurricanes, and that type of things. It's very important that they have a close coordination with us to ensure that accurate, precise information is sent to us for analysis so that we could brief the public to let them know exactly what is happening and for them to act in accordance with the advisory that we put out, which is based on the Met Service alerts. Whenever a flood, um, a flood occurs, then that will be where the hydrology department would step in and keep the public informed about whether or not this flooding is expected to continue. If river, um, they also focus on, on different types of flooding, like river and flooding, after the rainfall. So our office monitors the rainfall, which would lead to the flooding. Typically, we would um, be in constant communication with SEMO, for instance, um, in the Belize City area, to let them know whether or not the rainfall is expected to continue, how much rainfall is likely to occur, and um, so that they have a guide and to determine whether or not the rainfall that we are expecting would result in flooding, and that helps them to um, plan or prepare for if they would need to evacuate any persons. With that information, then we are better able to do our jobs because we know that at the Met Service, we are saving lives. <laughs>